In this lesson, we'll be discussing projectile motion problems. This is question number one. The question reads, a soccer player kicks a ball at an initial velocity of 18 meters per second at an angle of 36 degrees to the horizontal. Find the time of flight, range, maximum height, and velocity components at time is equal to zero, the mid-range, and impact. Let's begin with an illustration of what's happening. First, I'll draw an xy plane. So this is our y-axis and this is our x-axis. And right at the beginning, when x is equal to zero, x here represents time. Right at the beginning, we have an angle of 36 degrees. And the initial velocity, which I'll represent as v0, is 18 meters per second. So this vector here represents 18 meters per second. Now what's interesting about a ball being kicked is that it will take on a parabolic trajectory. So it will look like this, reach a maximum, and then eventually after t seconds, or in this case x seconds, will reach the ground. At this point what I will do is break down this vector into its x and y components. So I would like you to focus in on this part specifically. We have a right triangle. And remember, that's that arrow right there. This angle is 36 degrees, and the magnitude of this vector is 18. To find the x component, which is this part right here, we can use what we know about trigonometric functions, sine, cosine, and tangent. So I'll write down the relationship so toa and to find this part that represents relative to this angle the adjacent and this is the hypotenuse so I can use cosine at an angle of 36 is equal to the adjacent which is what we're looking for and I'll denote the adjacent as V sub X over the hypotenuse of 18 if I rearrange this I end up with 18 cosine 36 is equal to phi sub x. So that's the x component and that will come in handy for when we use these formulas. Notice that that formula is summarized right there. The y component we can find using sine. So if we are looking for this part we will use sine. We have sine of 36 is equal to v sub y over 18. Rearranging for v sub y, we get 18 sine bracket 36 is equal to v sub y. Now what's interesting about the y component and specifically the equation that represents the distance from the horizontal, y, is that y can be calculated by taking this, which is 18 times sine of 36, multiplying it to the time, and then taking into account that there is a force of gravity that is pulling the ball down, we then subtract it by this expression, negative 0 0.5 times the acceleration due to gravity, which is 9.8 times t squared. The reason why this is negative is because the acceleration due to gravity is actually decelerating the velocity along the y-axis. So just keep that in mind and don't forget that formula. Now what we have to do is solve for t. t will represent the time it takes for the ball to hit the ground. And the ball will hit the ground when we are at this level, which is y is equal to 0. So I'll replace this y with 0 and solve for t. Let's go ahead and do that. We have 18 times sine 36 times t. And we can actually find out what that is equal to using our calculator. Make sure that your calculator is in degree mode. So 18 times sine 36, that's equal to 10.5801. So we can eventually change this to 10.5801. But I like 18 sine 36 more. It's actually more compact and easy to work with. And this part, that simplifies to negative 4.8 t squared. This is a quadratic, so we can use the quadratic formula to find out what t is. And there's a function on most scientific calculators. For me, it's mode 
5, and 3, where you plug in the values and it will give you the roots. So we have negative 4.8, that's our a value, that's the t squared value, a. That's the b value, and we actually don't have a c value. That's the constant, which is, doesn't exist here. Negative 4.8, and then I can type in 18 times sine 36 for the b value, and the c value remains the way it is. And we get two x values, or in our case, t values, one being 2.20, so t is equal to 2.20 and another t value that is 0. That's as expected given what we have here. So it takes 2.2 seconds to reach the ground. To get the maximum height, we can take the average of 2.20 and 0, which is approximately t is equal to 1.10. Substitute that into this formula, the one that we just made to get the highest value. And from that, we can actually find the range. So using 1.10, let's go back into our calculator, 18 sine 36 times 1.10, that's that first part of the expression, minus 4.8 bracket 1.10 raised to the power of 2. And we get a y value of 5.83. So y is equal to 5.83 meters halfway along this parabola, this quadratic. So that point right there when v is equal to 0, remember it's flatlining here, there's no velocity. When v is equal to 0, the maximum height is 5.8 meters. And that happens when t is 1.1 seconds. So we found the maximum height. We have the components for the velocity when t is equal to 0. The time of flight is also found. It was 2.20. The range is between 5.8 and 0. OK, it doesn't go below that. And to summarize the things that we found, let's write down the velocities at t is equal to 0, when t is equal to the mid-range, which is at 1.10 seconds, and when t is at 2.20 seconds. So the x component for the velocity and the y component will be filled in. The x component, using this formula right here, for when t is equal to 0, we can write 18 times cosine of 36, that's 14.56, so 14.56 meters per second. The y component is using sine, so 18 times sine of 36, the y component is 10.58 meters per second. At 1.10, the x component is still 14.56, but since the ball has flatlined at that point, the y component becomes 0 meters per second. And at 2.20, the x component is still 14.6, and since the ball is going downwards after it's reached its peak, negative 10.58 meters per second for the y component. And there you have it. Our very first example on projectile motion problems. Make sure you watch question number two for more practice. See you soon.